Hey everybody, Brian Beeler here alongside Kevin O'Brien, Test Lab Guru. Nut. And Test Lab Nut Guru, as we're talking about the uh, Gigabyte R282Z92. And while that name doesn't exactly roll off the tongue, nor does it really mean anything to me, what I can tell you is that we've got a pretty cool 2U server here. It's an AMD dual proc Epic second gen, and so it's got a lot of good stuff going for it. Let's just get right into it. One of my favorite things of all, if you follow our videos, is drive bays that don't require tools, and Gigabyte has done that for me. You just snap in the little uh, SSDs in here and you're good to go. So we've got 24 NVMe drives across the front of this thing, but wait, there's more. There are more. two more. There's two in the back too. Now those are SATA SAS drives, but they will give you two more drives for logs or for whatever else you want to use them for. And while we're on the drive count, there's an M.2 guy tucked in in the back here. Is that a full uh, 110? Yeah, and it includes its own little heat sink, so you don't have to worry about uh, higher power uh, drive causing heat issues. Okay, so we've got three different kind of drive options, which is neat. As we go ahead and scroll through the, scroll through, stroll through maybe the, stroll. the front yes. uh, to back, we've got uh, four removable uh, fans. We've got the two AMD CPUs. And what are we running inside this one? We're using the 7702. So that's the two gigahertz uh, 64 core CPU. So that would be 128 total cores, which is pretty robust. Yeah, with 120 gigahertz per CPU, 256 combined. So well, that's aggregate gigahertz for uh, like VMware terms, but okay. it's a pretty stout platform. Yeah. And up to four terabytes of RAM, although we didn't test quite that much in this one. No, we just had uh, 512. And as we go through the, the middle of the chassis, you can see a lot of the cabling. Now, this is a common design for server chassis that want to put NVMe drives in the front. We've seen it from Dell. We've seen it, obviously, here from Gigabyte. We've seen it from many other times. Um, and it's probably the easiest, fastest path to get the NVMe drive support in the front. But the trade-off is that as we look in the back risers, We've given up most of our slots to these NVMe controller boards, for lack of a, a better yeah, term. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a unique approach uh, from certain vendors we've seen onboard connectors versus using the edge card slots. Um, and for a platform like this, there are a lot of available PCA channels out of the CPU, so it's not like you're, you have a trade-off between an edge card or NVMe. So it is kind of a fastest to market solution, might not be the most refined solution, but for... Uh, it, for a lot of people, I mean, you're still left with a OCP card slot and then two open uh, edge card slots. So there is still room for expansion. There is room for expansion. You've got two slots in the OCP that Kevin mentioned that is good for, I think, up to 25 gig E at this point in the little uh, OCP slot. But you're really only left with two then for expansion for either additional I.O., uh, NVIDIA T4, uh, a little FPGA. You're just a little bit limited on what you can do in the back of this thing. So just know going in that if you're looking at something like this, that the uh, the expansion slots are going to be a trade-off to get the 24 NVMe bays in the front. And while we're still back on the front, it is only PCIe Gen 3 compatible. There's not Gen 4 support here, which is a little bit of a letdown because that's one of the best things about the new AMD platforms is they've got support for the new higher speed drives. Yeah, those the drives, uh, you're able to get into areas to saturate the CPUs on Gen 3 products, but when you're looking at uh, single threaded performance to an individual drive, you have double the bandwidth available to a Gen 4 product. Right, and so we'll actually get to see a little bit more of what that looks like at scale. Uh, soon we've got another project we're working on with support for uh, the Gen 4 drives in the front. We'll be able to show a little bit more detail around what that means. Uh, but that's not to say that from a performance standpoint that this thing lets us down because that's not the case at all. So I just want to be clear that while there's more available uh, to this architecture, it does a really good job. Kevin, let's take a look at the, uh, at the results. Yeah, so when we're looking at uh, performance, uh, we tested both um, synthetic workloads using a Linux bare, uh, bare, metal, bare metal installation and uh, VMware E6i67U3 for application workloads. And for SQL Server, we tested four VMs and eight VMs, uh, and really, it just maxed out the uh, the, the workload, uh, or in this case, uh, Benchmark Factory for the workload uh, 
and we measured one millisecond for four VMs and 1.1 millisecond for uh, eight VMs. Pretty impressive. And just as a reminder, you've got 12 Micron 9300s in here? Yeah, we're using uh, 12 of the 3.84 uh, microns. So half of the available drive bays, just as a reference point. Yeah, and then as we move down to uh, Sysbench, we have a little, uh, so we compared it to the uh, single proc uh, 7702P, and then uh, this is with eight VMs on both. Um, and for eight VMs, there is a, uh, it's a decent edge going from, uh, it was around 13 or 14, uh, 15,000 IOPS up to around 18 and a half uh, going to the dual proc. T TPS, but, right? Yeah. But as soon as you went up to 16 VMs and uh, leveraged more of the available uh, clock speeds, you were able to go up to around 30,000 transactions per second, which is very, very good. Yeah, that's a nice stacking effect there. Uh, average latency, again, is really good across the uh, across the board. Uh, and then even the uh, 99th percentile latency, everything is nice and consistent. Uh, I think where the, a lot of the fun comes into play, though, is when you start looking at the synthetic numbers. Yeah, here come your, your monster hero IOPS and uh, throughput numbers. Yeah, what do you got? so here we were only able to hit 7 million IOPS, although I think if you ran 24 drives instead of 12, you'd probably be able to beat that. Uh, 4K random, uh, just under uh, 3.5 million IOPS. Uh, now, the fun one is the uh, sequential read bandwidth. 40 gigabytes a second? Yeah, 40 gigabytes. That is, uh, I mean, you could saturate uh, two uh, 200 gig uh, uh, ports pretty well. I mean, mm. it's it's pretty fun. Uh, sequential write, uh, this is a little bit slower, just under 16 gigabytes a second at a uh, fairly low latency. But, I mean, there's... There's a lot of fun you can get with this platform that, uh, I mean, there's so much I.O. potential here. Well, that's what I'm saying, too, right, is that we kind of are difficult on the platform because we always want to see everything always the best, right? But in this case, this platform came out really quickly when uh, Epic uh, Gen 2 came out, was immediately on the market. So it's been out there for a little while uh, and still does a pretty remarkable job. Yeah. So overall, it's a, it's a great platform. Like I said, we tend to pick on it for its deficiencies from a storage standpoint, only because, like your children, you want to see them be the best children they can be. We want to see the servers be the best yeah. servers they can be. And it's still a really good server. Gigabyte does a great job uh, with system build and design. We've seen now four or five in here in the last uh, year and a half, two years. And they're really good about delivering these systems quickly. So when new tech comes out, they're architecting and engineering and shipping pretty quickly, which is nice. It's almost day zero sh uh, shipments. It, yeah, I mean, they were right there at the beginning uh, for both of those launches. So overall, fun platform, 40 gigabytes per second, ain't too shabby out of 12. No. Uh, they're not even leading class drives anymore, really. 12 kind of uh, uh, garden variety enterprise NVMe SSDs uh, and, you know, just Cranking 7 million IOPS and 40 gigabytes per second is pretty sick. So overall, fun platform, worth checking out if uh, if you don't need the Gen 4 support in the front, uh, but otherwise a, a strong server. Yeah. All right. Thanks for checking out the review.